What's up and welcome to another episode of the Scott and Ian show on the SBL podcast. But today we have something totally different and wonderful for you. Scott and I got to sit down and have a chat with the incredible Addie Oasis. Now, Scott actually hipped me to Addie. I checked her out on Instagram and then went and devoured all of the YouTube content and her records on Spotify. Addie is incredible. She is a singer, songwriter, bass player, band leader, but it it doesn't do it justice, right? You have to hear. And in the interview, Scott and I geek out on her songs with her. Hopefully, Addie, it wasn't too <laughs> embarrassing for you. Like, we're just like, ah, just feeling it so much. For me, Addie gives me this like really awesome throwback vibe to the Soulquarian era that I love so much, like with Erica Badu and Jay Dilla. She has incredible tone, both in her vocal vocal approach and in her bass playing, just like excellent vintage vibes all the way around. She uses effects. We talk about singing and playing the bass at the same time. We laugh a lot. We have a great time. So I can't wait for you to check this out. But before we get to that, let me just tell you what we've got going on this week at SBL. You guys, we just released a brand new course yesterday, March 8th, Songwriting and Composition with Michael League of Snarky Puppy. I personally have devoured all of the content that Michael League has put on the SBL platform. This, I can't wait. Like, I'm actually filming this before this course comes out, right? So I can't wait to dive in with you all on that. So check that out. We also have the weekly mentor session coming up Monday, March 13th with Jacob Umansky, who is my favorite favorite current metal bass player right now. He is an absolute beast technician. I just saw something that Aaron Marshall of Intervals put up of Jacob just like shredding in the studio and his technique, timekeeping, concept, approach, untouchable. He's amazing. Also, we have the Fretboard Accelerator program. That enrollment is still open. We have a free sample lesson available if you want to check that out. Links in the description. And we are in the middle of our five-day Fretboard challenge at the moment. A lot going on at SBL. But I'm done telling you about that. Let's get into this interview with the incredible Addy Oasis. I wanted to just give you a bit of context, Addy, of how I came across you because it was actually through YouTube. I was just sitting there one wow, day, okay. minding my own business, flicking through <laughs> YouTube like I normally do, and I always get um, a lot of bass stuff in my uh, in my sort of like YouTube stream and stuff like that. And a thumbnail popped up that just sort of like really caught my eye. I think it was because of the colors of the background and stuff like that on the actual thumbnail. And it was from the video um, of, what's it called? I've got it written down here. Whisper My Name. What YouTube oh. channel was that on? On Colors. Colors. On colors. That track is freaking uh -huh. awesome. It's crazy. Thank you so much. It's oh, awesome. Thanks, I have sent. I've sent that video to like it must be over twenty or thirty people. It's just so oh, well, thank so you. good. So you guys are the reason why we got so many views. <laughs> I'm gonna take thanks. like yeah, it was all me. It was all me. How many pe How many people have seen that video now? I think it's uh, between one and two million, something like that. It's crazy. It's five five or, Congrats. That's so cool. It's great. Yeah. Colors is a big, you know, it's huge for that. And that's, that's, that's what happens with colors is people just see it and, and, and share and their platform is amazing. It's, it's really, it was a dream to be, to be on it. So how did they get, how did they find you and reach out to you and get you on the channel? Oh, uh, I can't remember. They probably, it probably was the same way you found me through their channel, like whether they kind of, they have, they're amazing talent scouts. They're just yeah. always constantly put out videos of people that we've never heard of or, or, or seen or who have a small following and it's they're all just up and coming and and super super talented and they have this this talent for like a niche find find finding artists yeah it was it was just fantastic do you mind if i play like a couple of minutes of that track yeah, just because no, no, mind. <laughs> I know the listeners will be like hearing, maybe, maybe they've not heard of you, maybe like they're thinking, you know, what's she like? Like, what does it sound like when she plays bass? Yeah, so I want to play everybody yeah. the track because it is just phenomenal. And for anybody listening and not watching, you are playing this amazing pink Mulan P bass as well. And I'm like, so, yeah, I'm so jealous. I saw that bass and I was like, <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> Same. Yeah, yeah. So great. Also, something to note is that Addie is also singing. So you're not only playing bass on oh, this, yeah. you are singing. For people that for people that don't know, yeah. right? That's important to know too. And if you're watching the pod, you'll see it. But if you're just listening, yeah, Addie is double duty. <laughs> double duty. Yeah. Is, check this out. It's it's killer. I'm doing Ooh. the fade. Oh, like, I'm Live a fade, dude. Uh, <laughs> it's so oh my word. It's so amazing. And it's it's like it feels fresh but also timeless, right? Like oh, in you. this really, of course, R and B zone. And I we just have so many questions for you. I think the thing <laughs> that I want to ask first that I think our audience will be so interested in is why the bass? Right, like, when did you fall in love, and how did you fall in love with the bass? Oh, great! It's a great story. Yeah, uh, and it's a it's a beautiful life lesson because sometimes out of chaotic situations come out the best things. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I mean, I I started with singing and I started playing guitar when I was a teenager, around sixteen, to to start playing songs mainly. So I I knew a little bit of guitar, and after I moved to New York. Um, I had my first group and I'm going to try and make this quick, but we had, it was a trio and one of the guys played guitar and beatbox at the same time and yeah. also rapped and sang, super talented. The other guy played percussion and, and sang and rapped and I played guitar and we hired a band for a show it was, you know, small New York local shows and the bass player canceled at the last minute. The show was a day or two later and we're in rehearsal and he's like, I'm not going to make it. I got a bigger gig. Oh, and we were like, okay, fine, we're paying you $50, I get it. <laughs> and the guys were like, hey, Addie, you play guitar. Why don't you just play bass? Yeah. <laughs> That's how it happened. Literally, wow. it was like, oh, wow, yeah, why not? And they put a bass in my hand, and I was already a huge fan of the instrument. Yeah. I never thought I was going to play. And then they were like, and I just grabbed the bass and just fell in love. It was like love at first sight. And... <sighs> I played uh, the first show two days later while I played Amazing. bass and, and sang at the same time. It was pretty terrible. It was really bad for a few months. And then I, I just locked myself in, a, in my apartment and just practiced and practiced. How long ago was that? Uh, that was about 10 to 12 years ago. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, I was in my early 20s when I started playing bass. I was like 22 or 21, 22. So really late. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. Uh, yeah, I'm late as well. I was like, well, not late. <laughs> but I was like 18 and 19 when I picked up the bass. I yeah. definitely wasn't like a, a super young kid when I mm. started playing bass. But it, it's it's do, like for when I watch your or listen to the sound of your bass now, there's like a really clear kind of um, aesthetic that I think like Ian leaned into earlier, like that R&B vibe, you know, like I'm assuming, mm. do you generally play with flats all the time? Is it that thing that you go for? Actually, the, the Mulan doesn't have flat wounds. It has round wounds. Is it rounds on that? 
Wow. Yeah, it's rounds on it, but in the studio, I play flat ones. That's mm -hmm. kind of like Got it. my go-to. I play a Fender P bass. It's generally a P bass, and it. I've tried other things, and the, and the flat ones is kind of really what sounds best um, for recordings. Yeah. Yeah, because it sounds like it's got just got a real vintage feel to it. Why do you why do you play rounds live? Or I, I get the sense that you play rounds live when you said that. Is that true? I play rounds live. I, I think I want to try and switch. I just got this new Fender P bass, and I dropped it off right away to like put flat rounds on it, so I can really get used to yeah. playing it live. Um, it's. I think it would be the versatility. I'd say because I slap a little bit, um, oh. and somehow like there's something about the round rounds where like. I do a lot of slides and stuff on stage and I feel a little more comfortable with like gliding up and down the neck yeah. uh, with the rounds. Um, but I'd like to ideally maybe have two bases on stage and switch. Yeah, oh, have more, have more. <laughs> it's hard because I'm singing and I'm singing and dancing and it's like adding one and I'm also clumsy. So I like <laughs> fall, <laughs> I get tangled in my cables. It's like, we, you know, we need, we need her to get used to it. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. Bring us back when you, when you went into the shed, right. To learn how to play the bass. Mm -hmm. um, what were you consuming then? Like, what music were you listening to? What were the bass players or bands or songs that you were like, I have to learn this first? What drew you in? The first was Curtis Mayfield. Oh, yeah. My favorite bass player is, yeah. is Lucky Scott. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and I think also because I come from, I'm a singer, and the approach, my, what, what I think speaks to me in bass the most is like, sort of the melodic but i'm also such a bass player at heart i don't like too busy but i like and lucky yeah. scott has like that sweet spot where it's like the pocket and the bass lines are simple but there are some songs where he's like literally singing um there's a song called love me right in the pocket i don't know if you, and it's, i don't know it. no pun I don't know intended it. in the yeah, pocket yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, and it's this f minor line that he plays and is just so melodic and i just literally have sat there and cried like listening to it wow um so yeah, Lucky Scott, Curtis Mayfield um, was like my first. Um, I remember learning um, Fantasy by Earth, Wind, and Fire. Do, sure. do, 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 do. Yes. That was one of my first bass lines too. Uh, and then Sly and the Family Stone. Oh, Larry Graham, um, yes. Yeah, Larry Graham. You Just like right away, because I, I, I had been around like, bass player so much uh, and was already obsessed with bass before I started playing. So I just was, my focus was pocket. The first mm. thing was like pocket. Yeah. Just to That's know how to play simple. Well, and like coming from a singer songwriter background, writing songs, singing, you automatically yeah. know what the bass should be doing, right? Because you're Maybe coming at it true. from like, you need that to support you. You, that's yeah. right. And, and you want it to be interesting, but you also want it to be supportive. I mean, Scott and I have talked about this. Some of our favorite players, like we, we love, you know, bass players that are playing the instrument for the instrument's sake, but we also really love players that came from guitar, that came mm. from songwriting, like Paul McCartney, yeah. Yeah. for yeah. instance, mm -hmm. you know, Sting. where they're using the instrument sting. Yeah. Right. Where they're playing yeah. the instrument. Um, as accompaniment and with a really strong musical sense versus just yeah. like, look, I'm playing this thing for its own sake. I think some of the coolest bass players are, are songwriters. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. And I think what I learned, what I was taught about bass was always that like our role in the band is to, to or in the song is to make the song sound good, make everybody else sound good. Yes. Um, mm. So that was kind of always my my approach. Is like the, and to your point, because I'm already leading on vocals, so it's it's a lot more like relaxed for me. It's just my job is to just make it feel good and have a dope bass line, and then the embellishment comes from comes from the singing. And it just some bass player um, peers have told me that somehow it it is an advantage that I don't really have the capacity to play all these crazy solos and stuff. <laughs> yes, because yeah. I play more simple, right. uh, and a lot of people would just like call me first because they know I'm not going to play twenty thousand fills right. just because I can't and I don't want to do it wrong. I'd rather not do it. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're like coming from a musical space, right? Like thinking, yeah. like you don't need to do that. You don't want. It's not in your ears, right? You know, like you don't want to play these fills because you're you're probably hearing the song globally, not just from yeah. instrument perspective. 
it's like drummers when they like a lot of drummers that actually sing at the at the same time or and that's their main gig when you see them playing with other people they always approach it slightly different than like a regular drummer mm. right they'll play yeah. more for the song like anderson pack jumps to mind you did yeah were you like you toured with him or something like that what was that, I, saw that I on your opened, bio yeah yeah i opened for him a couple times and we've done some dj gigs together too we, we're we're not close friends but we're cool and he's He's one of my favorite drummers. He's monster. killer, right? He's and he, yeah, and he always example, plays yeah. in this kind of like super musical way. Yes. Have you ever, have you, ever, like, do you write on the bass when you're writing a song? Is that the main instrument you use when you write? Yeah, the bass comes second. It would, like, usually it starts with like a, a drum loop and a beat and just kind of like a vibe. Like, okay, what vibe do I want? Like, what BPM? Like, Oh, I hear something and it sparks an idea and it ends up being totally different. Yeah. Um, and then the bass line comes like right away. Have you ever written something that and then c- come to put that vocal melody on top and you're like, oh shit. <laughs> How do, <laughs> you know, do you need to simplify it down? Have you ever got yourself in trouble like that? Oh <laughs> yeah, all the time, all the time. Well, there's, there's, yeah. But again, because... Yeah, there's a couple songs. I have this song called Twilight where that one I specifically wanted to play a lot of fills and I wanted to do this song where like the fill is part of the song. Mm. Um, I was listening. I'm a huge Minnie Ripperton fan and yeah. she has a song called Perfect Angel that has this amazing bass like do 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 like it just the bass line just yeah. sings and I wanted to have something a little bit like that and I was like, oh wait. Am I gonna sing now? Because <laughs> it's part of the. Right. But again, like I yeah. play it in the intro because I have this, this really this the fill that's a melody, but I, I I can't play the full fill while I'm singing, unfortunately. I've got it. Uh, but I've it's got cool it actually because here. people are listening to my voice. Yeah, Twilight. It's called. Yeah, I've got it. I'm gonna stick it on for you guys. Check this out. It's yeah, let's hear it. It's obs- Your vocals on this are just absolutely obscene. I've just got to put that out there <laughs> it's you. like honestly i was like what <laughs> check it out Like you've like, oh. <laughs> you guys are so nice. <laughs> you've got it, all the syncopation in there as well. Like yeah. it's really, it's beautiful. Thank you. It's really beautiful. There was no yeah. drummer, so when I was kind of playing a little bit more like rhythm, uh, and the syncopation, I, I got a lot of. I, I think that's definitely part of my style. Like a lot of syncopated rhythms, um, yeah. and that's I learned a lot from Lucky Scott on that. Mm. It's like oh, yeah, it's the, yeah, it's got that real Motown feel to it, hasn't it? It's like the but but you know, all the mm, upbeats, yeah, all the, of that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's killer. When when you're doing that, so like you're like, oh no no, not this one. The you know you got to listen to the recording, um, which mm-hmm. which which we will do. <laughs> like I'm gonna do no, it right after to, this. Fine. But I I you're making concessions though live and and always putting the vocal on top, right? So like if you're not trying to play the bass and then losing the vocal like the singing is the thing that has to come first is that right yeah and it's kind of a dance like in this was the perfect example because in the beginning well sorry i was talking over it but i did play the do 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 um but i play it in the intro and then the, that's when the bass like sorry the no it's all good are you in new york it sounds so like new york yeah yeah authenticity I'm in, york, <laughs> in brooklyn yeah um <laughs> Yeah, that's my life getting interrupted by uh, action on the street all the time. <laughs> yes. But yeah, and, and it's just, yeah, it's about who whose turn it is, you know? It's like, it's not right. it's not your turn to speak right now. Just play your role. And and sometimes it's the case with the vocal, where if it's the, the outro of the song and I'm kind of singing more of a of a background-y kind of, kind of part, then I just embellish a little bit more on the bass and sure. I just, yeah. 
I have a friend who talks, who's a mixing engineer, and he talks about this thing called the revolving door concept, where at any point in a song, there's something that should be the focus, whether mm, that's exactly. the bass intro or the vocal, but it, you can never have two things perfectly in focus. Mm, so it's this yeah. thing that always rotates, or like a cake case in a deli, that's always showing you something front and center, but then it yeah. rotates out of view to leave room for something else. And he talks about mixes in that way, that like, you know, at this moment, the drum fill is the thing even micro moments you know and then yeah, in the yeah. verse of course the vocal is the thing but i have noticed that so much about like singers that play another instrument that it they really you know in the moment that you're not singing you can do something on the instrument but then when you start mm -hmm. to sing this becomes this rightfully goes into its place you know the bass yeah. occupies that um uh, accompaniment space. Yeah. And it's so cool. I love mm -hmm. seeing that. And and that's a Thank great you. example of it, that so far session. It's so cool. Yeah. Yeah, Thank it's killer, you. yeah. It's killer. With the um with that uh, just just to I, I want to mention it because it's the first thing that jumped out to me when I saw you on that first video ID is that and and you you might not know this, but like bass geeks like myself and Ian and, and you obviously like when I saw that you were playing the Mulan that was like one, I was like, oh, 10 points, Mulan. Oh, really? <laughs> Obviously, yeah. And then on top of that, there was the strap as well. You had an LK strap. I was like, <laughs> oh, she's a bass geek in disguise. You like, you like LK straps too? Yeah. 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 That's yeah. how I gauged it. Like, if it was, if you hadn't had the move, if it was just a normal P bass and a normal strap, I would like, yeah, she's cool. But it was the Mulan and the LK strap that gave you extra kudos straight away. I was that, like, oh. Did I give it away? Give yeah, that gave it away. Yeah, I was like, oh shit, she's a, yeah, she's a, a true geek. True geek. Uh, uh, that's so funny. Well, and I'm I mean, I, yeah, yeah. I would love to, um, Scott. We've got that that uh, other tune queued up. I think uh, where Addie's oh, playing Twilight. envelope filter. Yeah, yeah. we put not Twilight. Play a of that. Sorry, multiply. No. Yeah, multiply. This one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. This song is so great. I'd love Thank to hear you, you talk about this a little bit. And I'd love to talk to you about envelope filter bass playing too, because it's just yeah. sounds so good on this track. <laughs> Thank like you. Like it's mixed so front and center too. And the envelope mm -hmm. is so like syrupy. It's just yeah. awesome. It's great bass line. I like that word. That's what yeah. I was going for. <laughs> yeah, good. What is it? All right. What's well, the word Ian? What, syrupy. What was that? Syrupy. Syrupy. Yeah. Syrupy. What would how would you say it in, in England? <laughs> I'm not sure that we have <laughs> syrup over here. Syrup. You don't have syrup? You don't have syrup? You say syrup. <laughs> Scott they would have say potatoes. Syrup. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't got that maple syrup, dude? You got that maple syrup? Sop with the pancakes? Well, I hope this one Check is the right one. Right one. <laughs> Just pause there, just to say that I really appreciate all of the space. It's There's so all cool. of this space in there. This song has doesn't have that much in it, yeah. It's beautiful. It's, it's beautiful. beautiful. I don't know whether that was intentional, but it's just freaking gorgeous. It's just boom. Thank you. Boom, boom. Yeah. And there's just all of this. Yeah. It's like I'm not sure if you've heard the the live album that Erica Badu de did back in the day, you know, oh, with yeah. Hubert Eves on it with Poogee Bell on kit. And, uh -huh. and and that album is just like a masterclass in space. Yes. When they play, there's just all of this intentional space. And maybe it's because I'm so bad at leaving space myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, I've always got like a need to fill space, but I just think that this is just gorgeous. Anyway, just I'll, I'll Thank you. Let it let it play on. <laughs>
It's so great. It's so and I, I saw you on Instagram too, talking about like taking back this idea of of talking like there's this thing of like, you know, want to have your baby in R&B uh -huh. music. And you're like, you know, yeah. and I'm taking that back and like controlling that narrative. And I love, yeah. it just, it's just so you. endearing. What an endearing thought. It was so. Yeah, it was a little risky to put the word ovaries in the song. <laughs> I was like, you know what? I'm going to just do it. I love it. I love it. I, I love, I love the transparency and just, <laughs> and the, and the like taking it, taking it back. I mean, and you know, Scott and I are both dads. So, you know, I mean, you know, the base dads, yeah, base dads, <laughs> base respect, dads. respect for the family, um, respect mm. for talking about what you want. I love it. But I also want to ask you about this envelope filter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it's funny. A little geeky thing is that I don't play the same envelope filter pedal in a studio mm -hmm. or on stage. So uh, live, yeah. I play, um, I play the, the reissue of the, of the, um, the Mutron, the Mutron yes. envelope filter. Yeah. You know, yeah. I would love to have like, if somebody wants to send me the original giant square box that Bootsy played, um, but I have the reissue small pedal and it yes. sounds great. In the studio, it's just the thing um, of dialing in and just like getting that syrupy sound. And like, yes. if you, I, look, I look for something different when I'm producing um, and I use the MXR80 envelope. Oh, in the, uh, yeah, uh, in the studio? Is, in a studio, wow. there's some, something about a sweet spot, and I've tried different things, and, and there's the sweet spot with that pedal and the flat wounds. I yes. tried it with round wounds because I was like, it's filter, and it should be like, it should be, it should be round wounds. It should be a jazz bass. Mm. And actually, it didn't work as much, like in terms of the tonality that I wanted, because I wanted to cut a lot of the highs, especially because yes. I'm, I'm singing a lot of falsetto and high notes here. So it's just a balance in, in yeah. like, what we're giving people, yeah. When you wrote that line, were you mm -hmm. immediately thinking envelope, or were you, or yeah. or did that come later? Really? And what's yeah. your what's your envelope influence then? Like, what were you going Bootsy. for? You, Bootsy, yeah, sure. Yeah, this song is definitely in, inspired by, yeah, I would, yeah, just Bootsy, P Funk. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, and, and it's, and I it, don't like. Sorry. No, no, please. <laughs> I don't like imitating. I don't like. You know, saying this is like a like an homage to Bootsy, or this is I'm trying to be Bootsy because I, I'm not. And P Funk is, you know, I have so much respect. Um, I think we have to be careful with cop, you know, not copying too yeah, much. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Um, but I also have to like be honest about what the inspiration is, and this song would not exist if if it wasn't for them. Yeah, and I love to. I hear a lot of envelopes that are sort of wide open, that are really quacky, that go up really high, quack. Mm -hmm. And I love how yeah. this one on the track is so like, yeah, it's it like sits right at that threshold of like you have to really hit it to get it over the yeah over the peak. And so you hear that yeah. kind of fight of it under the filter, and then like coming exactly. up in those moments when you hit it, and it's just it's perfect. Like you found the perfect threshold. It, it, it's really hard to do. Uh, thank you. you and know? It, there's a little, I, I have to give it to the uh, mixing engineer too. You know, there's a lot of work to do and dial in in the moment at the studio, but I also try to, um, I always keep the best take. The take that has the best pocket is more important. Mm. It, it worked out this way. Like it, and very often it happens where I'm like, this was a, this was the first take and it was like a one take and I was just kind of, uh, and then I was like, okay, I'm going to replay it. Now let's dial it in. Let's do more. And it was, I, I did it three more <laughs> yeah, times. Yeah, yeah. I threw it all away. I went back to the first one and Chris so Connors, cool. who makes the album, just did such a good job at, at like, you know, mixing it in the, in the yes. perfect way too. It, so it feels like feels underwater. Yeah, it, it's beautiful. What's your process uh -huh. of recording? Like when you go into the studio, are you, like, how do you work with that? Are, is it you sort of like, are you laying down the tracks? Have you got, are the drums programmed? Are you bringing other musicians in? Like, what's your process? So for this one, um, actually, a lot of times we'll record with like a drum loop um, yeah. and I play bass and very often I'll keep the take because again, the pocket was there and the drummer, Kaito Sanchez, just plays over it, uh, over the bass and with yeah. a click. Um, that happens sometimes. 
for the this new album that's coming out, um, we a lot of it is just the me and the band jamming, and that's really what I wanted. This song, Ado yeah. there's a song called Adonis that's out now with Kirby. Um, it's a one take off the grid. And it started with the guitar riff that Jaleel Bonten, the guitar player, just was playing around in rehearsal. And we we're like, we have to do something with this. And the four of us just sat there and, and just created the song. And like, it's becoming more and more organic. And I think that's, that's really what I love um, uh, about the, the, the process. It's like when it's musicians in the studio playing together. It's yeah. such a dream. Yeah, it's when it's the, that. It's it's the, it, yeah that's the best isn't it it's the, it's yeah. tough isn't it because obviously that's like the most expensive way of doing it as well like if, if anybody's listening at home and saying well why don't people do this all the time it's because it's yeah. expensive to get in the right. studio and pay people to be there but i think that yeah. that's definitely the most creative approach to oh. to recording an album when's the album coming out march 3rd, march 3rd. Oh. So, so. Mm -hmm. what's it like getting yeah so cool. it's gonna <laughs> it's gonna be you. awesome when it drops like what's your process for getting ready for something like that like getting ready for what what do you because i'm sure that people listening to this will be looking at you and you're like super awesome artist really talented mm -hmm. great bass Thank player you. great vocalist you know you're f you've got like over a hundred thousand followers on instagram my assumption is you'll have sort of like thousands of followers on on other platforms as well like What's your advice to people looking at you thinking, I want to, I want to follow, I want to be my own artist. I, and I want to, I'm looking at, you know, looking at yourself and thinking, how do I do that? How do I even get into it? Mm. You know, I share a lot about that in the album. Like I have this song called Get It, Got It. That's about like fighting your fears. Mm. And I think what I've been, what's working for me is just to be honest and very vulnerable about the fear that I go through and how, mm. Cause, you know, we do something, especially when you're putting music out there where it's like once you put it out, it's about it's not I, won't, I don't like the word judgment, but it's about how people are going to appreciate it. Like, are they going to want to consume it or if, they're, if they reject it, then it, it's not successful. Um, and that's so that's so scary. Oh, yes. And it took me such a long time to get there. And I was hiding behind bands and I just got to a point where I just started um being okay with failing, with with having a song that's not that great because the next one is gonna be better. Mm -hmm. And just being okay with being the only one that likes it. That's the most important. <laughs> like really when I stopped yeah. caring about people's opinion is when I started really creating um, with my heart, you know, really creating with using my own thoughts and my own ideas and, and not, not projecting what people will think. Uh, and I find that the more you do that, the more people relate. Do you think it was a time thing? Do you think that you just needed to do it for enough time to get to get comfortable with not giving a shit about what other people think? Do you think you just had for to put me, the reps it was. In? It was, yeah. For me, it was. Then you have artists like Prince where, you know, they come out and like their name is Prince and they look like, <laughs> you know, uh, and they yeah. touch an instrument. And I'm using him as an example because I'm a giant prince fan and his uh his passing was the trigger for me really um yeah i was in a band in a new disco band called escort which was doing pretty well and and i was writing a lot of my own stuff i started double with production and really wanted was frustrated with the band because i just wanted to express things my way in my own style of music i was too afraid to do it i was like oh it's not gonna be as good people are not gonna like it and prince passed and I heard an interview of Stevie Wonder while well, he was fully crying, talking about Stevie, and he said, what I loved about him the most was he didn't care about what people thought of him. Mm. Yeah, yeah. And that gave me a big slap in the face because I also, in my mind, was convinced I was going to meet him or play with him at least once. Yeah. And when I was faced with the reality that one of my dreams would never come true, I was like, I can't. That has to be the only one. Wow. That that hits me because I live in Minneapolis. I've been here since the oh late '90s, God. and I mean, his passing in this town, of course. I mean, in the world, but also in this town, was of course really felt. Everyone here has print stories. Every every musician in this town, you know, that's a that's older than I don't know thirty or something, has mm. print stories. And I mean, it's it's just wild. Very like baked into the culture. And I yeah. think that was a it was a big wake up call for a lot of people. And it's it's wow. really really cool to hear you say that. I mean, I mean, it's sometimes you know, like you said earlier in this interview, sometimes the great things come out of 
don't know what you said. Calamity. That's not the word you use. Chaos. Yeah. Chaos. Yeah. Chaos. <laughs> yeah. A scene. Are bad news? Bad news are yeah. the bears of, of, of good news sometimes. Yeah, right. So that's a silver lining that we got you out of the deal, you know? And so, the silver yeah. lining is I ended up even playing with the girls who were in Third Eye Girl. Like Hannah Walton is wow. a close friend. And really? like two years later, I, I think about a year maybe even later, I was playing with Donna and Hannah. That's <laughs> incredible. Yeah. Amazing. Wow. That's How so did cool. that come about? Uh, I used to play for CeeLo Green. Yes. So I, I was his bass player and for, for a time that we were, that was the band. No shit. Oh. Yeah, you got to play yeah. that bass riff, that you know the thing in the track. In, What's uh, the track with that? Yeah, in, in forget you. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 totally. I, uh, I and that's what I thought when I got the gig. It was like I'm gonna play this. <laughs> yeah, in the bridge. Yeah, in the bridge, right? Yeah. 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 It's such who? a freaking awesome bass it's line, sick. isn't it? Addie, yeah. who played that originally? Do you know? Did, was it Pino? Someone told me that it was Pino, but I'm not sure. I wouldn't. I don't remember. Okay. Okay. It's embarrassing, but no, I know okay. that that um, Bruno Mars co-wrote that song with Cielo. Wow, he's yeah. a beast. Yeah. So I isn't think he? it's yeah. Bruno's bass player, Jamero or Jamario Artis. Jamario Artis, isn't it? But I could be wrong. I, sh I should check. Heavy. I think I did like yeah. a deep dive on this track one time. I think it might be. I think it could have been the producer of the track. Yeah, the play bass. I think so. I could be telling massive lies. Yeah. So just take <laughs> it. Obviously, to... neither of us know. None of us know. <laughs> None of us know. Yeah, it's all yeah, good. We'll, yeah. we'll, know, we'll know, at the, we'll know um, at, after this. We what was it like paying for CeeLo? Was it cool? It was so fun. Yeah, it was great. He's, uh, yeah, he's, he's so nice and he's such an amazing performer. Um, and he was one artist that was really trying to, really pushing us to be in front. Like it was, it wasn't like just be in the back and let me be the star. It was mm. like just get in there and like we were a giant part of the show and it really helped me develop a lot of my my stage persona too. Just like being able to do that while just playing bass and having that freedom of not singing at the same time um, yeah, was yeah. always fun. Yeah. Are you still working as like a bass player as well as being like an artist, your own your own project? Or are you no, fully, not you're fully committed to your own project? Yeah. Do yeah. you miss it? Do you miss it? I do. I miss. I miss parts of it. I just. I miss just playing with the band. Just, mm. you know, being there with the drummer and just and just playing without the the pressure of having to sing. It's not pressure, but just just playing bass. You know. Yeah. Um, Focusing but on I one thing. But I get that thing. at the studio. I mm. get that at the studio because. And maybe that's why I ended up being like, let's just do it live, guys. <laughs> <laughs> because I miss just being the bass player. I don't know. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Um, and Addy, can you tell us too, just a little bit about like your attitude about this new normal of social media? Um, <sighs> you're obviously really, really active on Instagram. Um, we talk to people that have a really wide variety of responses or, or attitudes about it. Some people that really love it and view it as this, you know, democratization of music and view that as a really good thing. And then other people that think it's destroying it. music. Yeah, hate that it. hate it. <laughs> you know, and um, Scott and I, of course, both have our own feelings about it. But we'd love um, someone who's active on Instagram, like mm -hmm. you, how, how do you feel about it? I think we just, we have to live with our times. And you can accept it, you can be a part of it, or you can be out of it, you know? It's, yeah. it's our choice. Uh, unfortunately, as an artist, I don't have much of a choice. I have to do it. Mm. Some artists get away with not being on Instagram at all and have a great career, and uh, it's not my case. I, 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 it's been so helpful for me. And, and when I started actually seeing it as a professional, because before I started, putting out bass videos in my Instagram, I kind of hated it because I just was like, why am I just gonna post selfies? And right. And I was a model for years, but still, I was like, it's not the same thing. That was a job, it was different than like posting photos of myself. And that yeah. part, the self-indulgent part, I just didn't want to be part of that culture. Mm -hmm. But I think there's a way to find authenticity within it that will speak to people and once again it's what i was saying earlier like the truer you are you will find your crowd your yeah. crowd will find you um and i have a lot of people that just want to watch me play bass and that, and that's yeah. cool 
it's a little unrealistic with the bass sometimes because you don't really catch a groove in 30 seconds, you mm. know? And yeah. it's hard to make it sound good because bass doesn't necessarily come out through the phone well enough, but these are just details. Um, it's just helped me connect with my community of like people who care about what I have to say and what I play, you know? So mm. I can't hate it. It's a tool. Yeah. I think that's a really healthy outlook. That's yeah, <laughs> it really is. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. yeah. Can you tell us too, Addy, like where, where can we, where can people go to support you? Like what's, what's the thing coming up? Obviously talk about your record coming out again. Uh -huh, thank you. Give us all the, give us the website, give us all the stuff so that people can go check you out because, um, everyone listening, you need to, you need uh -huh. to. 100%, yeah. So yeah, let us, let us know where we can go to support you. So, uh, I have an album called Lotus Glow that's coming out on March 3rd. Um, you can hear it's, it's on all streaming platforms, you know, Spotify, and you can see the videos on YouTube and Amazon Music and uh, Apple Music. Uh, I actually, uh, the best way to support would be to order the vinyl, because for the first time we're making this album in vinyl, and I highly, you know, recommend still consuming music in physical form yeah. and like streaming is great but we don't get we don't really get paid for it right yeah. it's, it's yeah. just the irony of like go stream my music for free that i spent hours making yes uh I, that's part again it's like the social it's part of the the world we live in but you know i'm, I'm selling vinyl for this and that's exciting and it's where do they get the vinyl at, if they wanted to buy the um, vinyl where would they go where do i you, go to buy the vinyl <laughs> if you go on my Instagram at Addy Oasis, there's yeah. uh, the link in my bio has the uh, basically what's called the link tree, and it has a link to everything. So you can pre-order the vinyl, you can buy tickets for the tour, which is coming up soon. I'm doing a North America and uh, the North America tour, so U.S. and Canada uh, in March, April. I will see you at the Turf Club in Minneapolis on April 15th. Yeah! Oh my God! Oh, yes! I'll be there. I can't wait. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's please, yeah. Let's exchange info. Make sure. Oh, I can't yeah. wait. I, I'm. I love that club. You're gonna have a great time. It's gonna be a lot of fun, and I'll, I'll be there. And Scott, we'll be in England. Are you in? Where in England are you? Leeds. What about you? Are you going to okay. Manchester? No, we're we're playing across the tracks. What about I don't know. I know that's south. That's south of London, but it's an hour and a half south. Oh, that's real uh, far away that's from Scott. That's in the sea. <laughs> that's in the sea. Yeah. <laughs> I'll east. check it out. I think it's southeast. <laughs> it's, I think, I'll, I'll, I'll check it out. Just Maybe before, it's in France. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Before you go, is it like with the vinyl thing, is that like becoming way more popular with artists like yourself to do vinyls to, to obviously help create some money to pay for albums and stuff like that is it becoming more popular i think it's i think it's always been a thing especially like at the merch table for instance like it's very mm. customary for artists to sell like uh vinyl at the end of the show and i've i've had like fans just curse me out for not having vinyl yet like mm. it, i was surprised at how of an ex expectation it is just costs a lot of money to make up front. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's why we just couldn't and, and to produce and like the production and stuff. It's it's a little bit like, so I, you know, artists don't feel bad if you don't have vinyl yet. Like it, it takes a while. It took me a while to get there. Um, but it's it's people love having that. They like taking that with them after a show. I I, I love the idea of it. Can I tell you a story? I'm I'm, I'm in real trouble Please. with my wife. My wife is pissed at me because of this. Right. So last year before Christmas, maybe in like September, October time, I was like talking about like record players. Right. I'm turntables. I was like, oh, you know what, Lisa, we should get like we should get a record player. We'll have vinyl. We'd use it all the time. And she was like, I'm not sure I'd use it all the time. But I, would, I would. I would use it all the time. So. <laughs> So Christmas Day came, I'm like opening the presents and stuff like that. And she'd bought me a record player. I was like, oh, amazing. I was like, this is the best present I've it's ever got. Oh. Right. So I got it and I put it, I've got like a B15 in the living room. I put it on top of the B15. It's there and it's sitting there. And it was, and I had to get some special lead thread or something to plug in a speaker or something like that. And because I'm super lame, I still haven't done it. Yeah, when you say I can relate. I'm a procrastinator when it comes to it. whatever it's technical. <laughs> I'm just you got this. so lame. I'm, I have faith in you. So think, I am going to go Scott. and buy, I'm going to pre-order the album. 
Yes. And it's oh, going to be so nice. Yeah, it's going to be the first it's going to be the first record vinyl that I'll have bought and I'm going to get some leads for that and I'm going to buy <laughs> oh, it. Wow. So, do know, I will I will message you on Instagram and I'll be like, we'll it hold happened. you to it. I will send you a picture of me playing <laughs> that record on that. Yeah. And oh, yeah. Maybe my wife will be less, less pissed at me. So, yeah. Anyway, Addy, <laughs> thank you so much for coming on. And have you got like a website and stuff like that that we can send people to? Or is it just yeah, direct everybody um, Instagram? Addy Oasis. Yeah, AddyOasis.com. Mega. That's awesome. Yeah. And I just, before I go, I want to say thank you so much. And because I love that you've been asking questions uh, in terms of advice, um, you know, guys, whoever's listening, I don't know how long you've been playing bass. I have been myself taking lessons on Scott's bass lesson. It's not a paid advertisement, <laughs> but it's important that I say it because you never know sometimes. Like, Scott, is, you're my hero when it comes to teaching. Just watching you teach is like, for me, an example of watching somebody just excel at what they do and really enjoy it. And I've learned so much. Even though I'm a professional bass player, I still go back on the on your website for stuff that technical stuff because I didn't go to school. And yeah, so guys, you know, it's never too late. You can be out there just starting an instrument and still write great songs. And it's, you can just go back and keep learning. Um, so that's that's the biggest thing for me that I'd love to share is like how I've been taking your classes and Thank you reached you. out to me saying I'm good. I just, shit. I can't believe it. Now I'm going to have to get my shit together. I'm going <laughs> to. No, it's really helped. Yeah, I'll tell you, there's another funny story that, because you did the jazz accelerator that, you know, that jazz I course did. I put together. Well, we've yeah. got something called the technique accelerator. So when you said that, just, you know, uh -huh. I think that you, you messaged me on Instagram and I was like, that voice message you sent me. And I was like, oh, whoa. Uh, but immediately I was like, oh, maybe I should have done it better. <laughs> no, <laughs> oh, no. perfect. And I had the it same was perfect. thing. So there was, a, the, we did this thing called the Technique Accelerator. And, and you know, we did the enrollment stuff. And then this guy called Stu, shout out to Stu, who's on the team. He messaged me and he was like, I think Tony Levin's enrolled in the Technique yeah, Accelerator. So cool. And I was like, oh, shit. I should have done a better job. <laughs> that's, no. It's, Every, it's, everybody's no, got that imposter are, syndrome. It's you know? very, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's it's been so helpful syndrome. for me. So, yeah, thank you so much. Because I have imposter syndrome big time. Because I play, I make sure to always surround myself with musicians that are better than me. Mm. Um, and I didn't go to school. I'm, I, I, and jazz is the piece that I'm missing. Mm. And really, it's unlocked a lot for me. Um, so thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Ed, Adi, thanks so much for coming on. Um, as you said, everybody, you know, you can find a website, adioasis.com, or go to Instagram. Are you on TikTok as well or not? I'm on TikTok, yeah. And on TikTok yeah. and all Adi of the Oasis. platforms. Adi Oasis. Yeah. Thank you so much, Adi. I call it here. I think that you're going to be a superstar. Before you came uh, on, I was you. talking to Ian. I said, seriously, she is a superstar. So I think that you're going to do uh, freaking awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank okay, you so take much. it easy, guys. See you in a bit. Thanks so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye.